now, now. I think YouTube is working now. Okay, okay, okay. Let's don't waste time anymore. Cause what time is it? Oh, five thirty-six. Did everyone everyone said hi? Okay. So you think miso soup be easy, right? But then the truth is, nowadays where do you have miso soup? In a Japanese restaurant, right? Or when you do a takeout, right? But unless, unless you're going to a Michelin star restaurant, let me tell you, this miso soup is way better. And you would think that, okay, it's a lot of work. It's not, okay? It's just a few simple tips that I do. Hi, Kathy! To, to you know, how do you say it? Bring up, bring, uh, uh, my English is bad. It's just bring the, you know, bring up this game, you know, like to make it just better. I think the, the phone is too low, way too low. I'm like looking down. Anyways, so first thing first, you know, any soup, any soup, the most important thing is that base. What is the base? It's the broth, okay? So if you, you can't use water, you have to use Japanese, Japanese broth. And how do you make Japanese broth, which is also called dashi, right? So the traditional way is that, can you see this one? Is that, you know, you have these dry sea kelp, okay dry seaweed basically some kind of seaweed sea kelp um i did in the comment one of the comments i want to pin my comments but i can't pin my comments they just know they just know that with me something's gotta not work okay technology doesn't like me but anyway um in one of the comments i did post the link to uh, what it is on amazon but of course if you can find it at your local supermarket you can buy it there i just want to show you what it is or you can buy it online and what you do is you take this out for about what i did is like how about um five cups of water today i use about you know this much it's like about this much two sheets two sheets right you okay and then before you use it you kind of uh, use a, a wet paper, paper towel and just kind of wipe it down, clean up, clean um, the surface of it. And then you soak it, okay? Soak it in cold water for a few hours, okay? So this is what I did. I soaked it for a few hours. You don't have time. If you don't have time, don't soak it. It's fine, but then it's just soaking it to make sure, you know, the flavor, you get the best, you, you get the most flavor out of it. So this is, now soft. Originally, it looks like this, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And now it's getting bigger because it rehydrated, and then it's um, um, soft. And now what you do is, since I soaked it, I turn it off. I turn the heat up. You want to bring it to it like a simmer like really light simmer. You don't want to boil it because uh, once you boil it, I really think the, the phone is just too low. It's not. To me it is. Uh, the, once you bring it to boil, then the collagen kind of thing, you know, like the seaweed gets like the sticky stuff will go into the broth. And sometimes, you know, because you want the clear uh, broth and light broth. So you don't want that. So you don't want to, and it also some people say, well, you will, when you boil it, you will um, bring out some of the bitterness from in the sea kelp. So anyways, you know, you, uh, this is what you do. So you just kind of bring it to close to almost, almost boil. And then you put in, whoops. <laughs> Anyways, and then you put in the dry bonito flakes. These are actually those dry fish, okay? Uh, like fish, the dry whole fish, and then they shave it into these flakes, okay? And this, will, uh, you put a lot of it, a lot of it. It's actually, you know, when they make the Japanese dashi, they use so much bonito flakes to give the, the, the best, the, the most intense flavor. So we're gonna put all of this into my five cups of water, okay? About 1500 milliliter. Rice is ready. <laughs> That's our dinner. <laughs> and then, okay, and then you put this in. Again, you don't wanna 
really boil it. So you bring to for me, you know, I just bring to a boil, and then right away I turn right away I turn the heat off, and then cover it and let it let this one and the sea kelp sitting there, like like you're sipping the tea, you know, like sitting there for about 15 to 30 minutes, and and drain it out, and then that will be your um, Japanese. Broth. Okay, it's called dashi. Okay, so we're this is how you do it. Okay, you can do that. All of that. We're gonna do it, so we can show you how, how how it's done. But nowadays they also have these Japanese Japanese uh, dashi. Dashi means the Japanese broth stock powder. Okay, so they are in like these kind of packets, and they have all of these goodies in this packet so all you need to do and then more actually they probably have also have mushrooms and stuff in there so all the umami in here and all you need to do is kind of like making tea you know put it in hot water and then let it sit in there for a while and then make your japanese broth this one is one of the best one you can find and i found them on amazon too so you can also get this exact same brand which is like one of the best from japan or I actually I don't know if you guys noticed but I actually see that Costco is carrying these things not, not the same brand but the dashi stock powder uh, for a while now because I've been seeing it for a while I think it's been at least half a year or a year now so anyways so you can also buy those uh, if you can find it at Costco I've never tried those brands have been using this brand like I don't know since forever I love it so we're gonna also do this today because so that you don't have to wait for me to uh, for the uh, homemade Japanese broth to uh, to sit for like 30 minutes. Okay, Fanny, can you check to see if YouTube is working? Anyway, thank you. Okay, so now another tip that I have for you is, like I say, the broth is the base, right? It's the most important. And what I learned, because every time when I go out and eat, I just if I can see what the chef is doing, how, oh, how, I mean, I'll focus on what they do. And I try to see if I can learn anything from them. So if you go to an open sushi bar, right, you will see the Japanese chef is like preparing uh, your sushi. And they have this, sometimes they have this big pot of miso soup, okay? So they, to serve, right? And what they do is they always cut their fish and then whatever tips that they shred, they don't want, they don't, they're not gonna serve you, they just put it in that huge pot. And that's why their miso soup is always so flavorful because, sorry, I was not, okay. No, okay, still not working, okay, that's fine, then whatever. Um, so, I was like, okay, that's because they have they have they prepare so many different kinds of fish, and then you know all these variety kind variety fish, you know, in the pot is making this broth so flavorful. So for us at home, there's no way for well, not no way, but then it's not convenient for us to, you know, make that broth easily to have like variety of different kinds of fish. So what I do is I use the halibut or any kinds of fish like salmon or a cod that you can find that actually in the like the, the Japanese supermarket here that you can find the bones or the tips, you know, just those that they, you know, the, 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 the part that they don't really want, they just, I mean, they don't really serve as a big chunk and then they, they, they sell these little package in the fridge area. If you can, or you can actually go to your uh, fish guy and say, well, do you have any of those, you know, discard that the, the tips and stuff that you, you can buy from them. And then I buy them and then I don't need to use those this much for my like one meal, right? So I will freeze the rest of half and then use half. So next time when I need to make mm, a good Japanese broth, I can have use the other half. Okay, no, 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 we have to look at the sea kelp now. It is like close to boiling. Now, so like you see these little bubbles, so you can kind of, can you see? Yeah, it's on, okay. Then you put in this bonito flakes. 
Okay. And then I kind of quickly bring it to a little boil. And then, like this, okay? I'm not gonna bring it to hard boil. I'm gonna turn the heat off and just cover it and let it sit. And it will be it for like 30 minutes or so. And then it will be our homemade, um, homemade Japanese broth, okay? Now, this one's boiling too. That I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use three packets. You know, you can use two, you can use, you know, three, one, whatever, you know, I like it. Strong flavor. So I'm gonna put it in. And I'm gonna let it simmer. Can you see this one? No, you can't yeah. see this one. Oh, okay. So you, I'm gonna let, let it simmer too for like a good three minutes. Let me see, three minutes. I need to set a timer or I'll be letting it boiling forever. While I'm talking. Okay, so fish bone or fish tips is my first tip for your amazing miso soup because you create another depth of flavor, not just the Japanese broth with the sea kelp and the dashi, okay, I mean, and the uh, bonita fish flakes, okay? Another layer of flavor in there. So let me open this up. Okay, now when this is done, when this is done in like two minutes, I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna bring it to boil and then let it cook for about, if you, can, if you, you cannot find the fish bones or the fish tips, then you can use the whole fish too. But then you can cut them into like a bite size and put it in and just leave it in. And then when you have the miso soup, you just have chunks of fish and that's also nice. But then if you put the real fish in, then don't overcook it because it's a good piece of fish, right? So you want to make sure you just boil it, simmer it for like 10 minutes and then call it good. Um, but because I'm using the bones, I'm not really care, I don't really care about the, the, the meat, the fish meat. So I'm going to put it in and cook it, cook it as much uh, up to like 30 minutes to get the most flavor out of it. Okay. And so that's, that's, that's that. And my second tip for you is the tofu, okay? Even though you think, oh, you know, tofu, everybody has tofu in their miso soup. What do you mean? It's your tips. It is my tip. Hold on. So, okay. My tip is that I'm putting it in early because it takes time for tofu to absorb flavor. I mean, yes, it's nice to have tofu in there, but then why does tofu have to take, taste, be tasteless, you know? So I like to put the tofu in first, so it's got time in there to absorb all the flavors, and I cut them small, so the flavor can get in more easily. And I do the soft tofu, and you can do what you like. Okay, my son loves tofu. Oh, three minutes up, see? Okay, I already forgot. Put it, turn it off first. Okay, and then I'm gonna, so. Okay, actually I don't think this is enough, but anyways, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put, Okay, so basically you're gonna take the packet out because there's bonita, 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 bonito, bonita bonito, 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 bonito flakes in there. So the same uh, concept uh, applies, which they don't want you to boil it for a while, for a long time, because then you bring out some kind of sourness to the soup. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the heat up. And then once it's boiled, I'm gonna put the fish in there, which is, wow, 
Look at the stove, it's amazing. It's already boiling. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the tofu in first. Just a little more because my little son loves tofu. And you can put whatever you like in there. You can put daikon, you can put mushrooms okay but the this is a basic concept if you want to put tofu in there you want to put it in i like to put it in early so that the tofu also is flavorful because why not right okay so we're gonna wait for it to boil i'm going to put the rest of the tofu here Oh, Baba, what is, how, hi, thank you, watching you in my car, you now want to miss, hi, thank you. Baba, what, how do you read this name, Mr. Oliver? Mr. Oliver? Yeah, Mr. Oliver. Hi. Well, basically, we're just talking about um, how to make the Japanese broth at home. There are two ways, you can just start with your, uh, dry sea cow and uh, bonita flakes. Bonita flakes um, to make your uh, Japanese broth, or you can buy those packets. We found I found that uh, Costco is having it. Those um, dashi stock powder package at Costco, and then um, or I did have the link in the this, uh, in the comments, one of the comments, so you can check it out. The one that I use is like one of the best, okay, from Japan. And apparently, Amazon has it all. <laughs> so you can find it on Amazon, but you don't have to buy that brand. So that brand is a little more expensive. And another thing is that we wanna give this broth as much flavor as possible. That's just the basic rule for making good soup, right? So we get any kinds of fish tips or bones. So what I, um, my, my favorite one is halibut, but you can get salmon, you can get cod, it, whatever you can find will make a difference, okay? It will be all good. Okay, so now we're gonna, and now I like to put the tofu in first, so the tofu has time to absorb more flavor. It doesn't have to be plain, right? Okay, now it's boiling, so I'm gonna, I like to put my raw fish, because I'm not really blanching it first, so I like to make a hard boil before I put it in, so you don't have like too much of the, um, what's that called? Impurities, okay, when you're cooking it, okay? Put it in, or you can blanch it first. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, with high heat, I'm gonna bring it back to boil, and I'm gonna cover it, and I'm just gonna forget about it, because this is bones, right? I don't care. Uh, the, the longer I cook, the more flavor I get out of it, so I wanna just keep it on. But if you get the real like fish fish and then you wanna keep it in there as, so when you eat the soup, you have these fish chunks in there, then you don't wanna overcook it, so just boil, simmer for like 10 minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna stir it, turn the heat low. Just keep it sim simmer. Okay, that's my that's your first tip. No, my first tip is the the fish bones. The second one is kind of like the tofu, right? Okay, and then your third tip. My third tip, oh, 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 but today, today when we went to the supermarket and we saw these uh, manila clams, that looks very gorgeous. So, okay, no problem, I'll see you later. Um, so, I don't know if you guys are interested, but I thought, you know, maybe I should share some of the tips on how to choose your manila clams. Do you guys, do you guys have a way to choose your manila clam? So when I am like, I don't know, when we were in Taiwan, when I was uh, in the wet market, traditional market, they will have clams, right? Different kinds of clams, but you know, they have like this buckets of clams and you will know that some are like really housewives, they come to get grocery shopping all the time and some are just like, oh, newbies, because <laughs> the newbie will get rolled eyes. And sometimes people are like, oh, no, you just don't do that, go away, go away, you shouldn't do that. Do you know what is the thing that you shouldn't do? 
there's always a scoop, okay? By that uh, bucket uh, or, 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 or um, the, the clams, but you don't ever, okay? Go just scoop it in. If people hate you. People will hate you for that. People go, oh, ah, don't stir. Why? Because you always want to see which one is fresh and alive. And how do you know it? Is by look to see if they sticking out their tongues, right? Or whatever that is. <laughs> but if you stir or a tiny little movement, they'll, they'll all go back in and close up. Then you, there's no way you can choose and you know which one's still alive and which one's not. So we always go in very carefully with our hands, like pick up the one that is sticking out and then you choose that one. You don't want to, dis you want to the minimum of disturb, okay, of all the clams. Because you disturb it next, it takes a long time for them to let off their guard, you know? <laughs> so a lot of the people who come and buy it cannot tell and, or, and the, the vendor will be very mad because people think, oh, nothing help, nothing fresh and healthy, nobody's sticking tongue out and they walk away to the next stand, you know? So you, the vendor will hate you. They will just shush, shush, shush you away. <laughs> so that's the tip. Otherwise, I would have washed it first and then uh, do it. But then there, because I want to show you. So I haven't washed it yet. But you see how mine is fat and healthy. Yeah. And then I come home. I always put like salt in the water. How much? I don't know. Just a bunch of salt and water. And so that they will stick out because they think it's seawater. So they will stick their tongue out and then spit out more, more of the sand. So when you're cooking it, you don't get the sand, okay? Otherwise, sometimes when you eat clams, when you get a little sand in there, it's kind of annoying, right? Anyway, that's the tips. Okay, so I don't know. Do you guys want to see how I made this and put it in? First of all, you have to brush it. You have to brush it, okay? Because... Okay, do you wanna, should we, should we do it? Should we do it? Let's do it. I see hearts, I see thumbs up, so let's, let's do this, okay? I am going to brush it real quick, and I'll show you how I make that broth and put it into my miso soup. that you don't use or just you know that you get from your dentist just use that to brush your seafood it's like perfect can you guys hear me though i don't think they can hear me i was saying 
saying if you have a tooth toothbrush from your dentist, then you can use that to brush your clam. The open mouth, the mouth part of the clam, there is still some kind of, sometimes there's like some seaweed or dirt or sand. Just quickly brush. to do is I don't even need any fancy pants or pants, 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 not pants, <laughs> pants. Okay. okay, and I'm gonna put in some sake or you can use Chinese rice wine or, or sometimes white wine, right? I'm just gonna sprinkle Chinese sake in there. I'm putting in about half a cup, a cup. I don't even need to cover this thing, okay? So let me show you guys. It's just like this, okay? Just enough liquid to uh, to get it simmer, okay? Can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put it on the stove, turn the heat on. The thing with clam, any seafood actually, it's just always, you don't want to overcook it. You want to make sure it's at the best of its texture and taste. And that's the thing. So I'm gonna, what I am going to do, actually I do have a, a video that's a, a perfect steam egg one that talk about how to uh, do this clam thing. But I'm gonna do it again and you can go check it out. The video of the steam, the clam steam egg thing. Cause it's an awesome video. And I tell you, that steam egg is so, Beautiful. It's like a mirror, kind of like a face, and it's like so soft and so flavorful. Oh, you're welcome, Kathy. Robin, come, come, come. Hi, Baba. How do you say it? Jerry, Jerry, my? Jerry Maya. Jerry Maya. Jerry Maya. Next thing I know, Jerry Maya. Maya. Okay, so we're gonna wait and see once the clam opens up. I'm gonna take it out right away, okay? Yeah, they're worth the effort, okay? And then very soon we're gonna go into the important part of the miso making. Uh. Where is my, okay. Do you want to take a look at my beautiful Japanese broth with the fish? And I'm gonna taste it. Oh gosh, this is already a super delicious broth. You can just drink it like that. You don't, yeah, this is amazing. I want more sip. Mm. So good so good people and use this broth you can do steam eggs as well okay watch for your clam not there yet okay so what I do with my miso okay I don't use just one kind of miso and I've of course okay miso is a whole nother world okay that I am NOT an expert I'm not an expert of all kinds of miso, but I do know what I, my, my cooking philosophy is always, if I wanna use some kind of seasoning, if it's uh, savory, I wanna make it salty, I try sometimes to not just use salt, maybe salt and, I don't know, um, I don't know, like soy sauce with maybe curry, right? Because it gives a different depth of like kind of flavoring in there. So you don't just use salt, you use like some other kind of seasoning savory agent to 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 season uh, to season your food and that gives a depth of flavor um 
So, for miso, the same thing. I use, and then tomato, okay? Tomato, fry, to, to, scramble egg with tomatoes, or any tomato recipe, if I can, I use uh, different kinds of tomato, yellow tomato, red tomatoes, purple tom tomatoes. I mix different kinds of tomatoes. It gives you different taste profile, flavor profile, and makes your dish amazing. Just simple trip, trick. So, okay, now my clam is opening up. I need to take them out. Some of them is open. Oh, see, this is just open. I'm gonna take it out. So miso, I also use two kinds. The first kind, uh, the one kind is the light miso that is super uh, white, uh, yellow, uh, pale because, and it's sweeter most of the time by nature. And I use the darker, I'm busy because they're popping. Oh God, <laughs> popping. Oh, and that, uh, the rice wine and the clam, the smell of it, just amazing. Here and here. Gosh, the popping. Okay, sorry. Got it. Oh, see, oh, beautiful. Look at that. You can see all the juice still inside. Oh, this one's broken. Can they see this one? Yeah. Oh, oh, pop open. You see that? Yep. That's the joy of cooking. Look at that. Come on, open up, stubborn one. The fighter. The fighter. The fighter is the best or the worst. If they, if they eventually open up, this is the fighter. It's the most, this is the best. But if they, if they really don't open up, okay, that means that one's. Uh, it popped open. Yeah, that one is uh, not fresh or dead. But because you see how I, you saw how I choose them, so you know my, mine are all fresh and alive. Okay, so this, I'm gonna put it back in at the very end, okay? Right now, I'm gonna put this clam broth. The, the juice from the clam and the um, sake back in here. Oh, okay, the heat's too high. Okay, what you need to do is actually the best way to do it is if you have like a coffee filter thing, the paper thing, you put that here and then you can drain off all the, the sand if there's any. But then can you, you can look at mine, it's basically really clean because I already let them spit out the sand most, uh, mostly. But then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be very careful because I don't have that coffee filter thing here. So I'm gonna just carefully pour it in and I'm gonna leave the bottom part. I'm not gonna use them because that's where you have most of the sand in there if there's any. So I'm gonna put this in. And I'm gonna sacrifice the bottom part because you can see if there's anything it's all like in here I don't know if you can see it anyway just trust me all right now try this now you try this um, broth one more time it's gonna be so amazing oh. okay but if you don't have the manila the manila clam is just uh, extra you don't have to have it okay the fish bone will be good enough for uh, everyday miso soup okay Okay, now this is actually basic it. We're gonna put the miso in. So I have this darker one, uh, dark and darker miso, brown miso, or the, 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 the white miso. Okay, I mix these two. This is sweeter, this is saltier, and they have different kind of uh, flavor profile, and that will make your uh, miso amazing. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is open this up. Okay. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. One more tip, one more tip. This is tip number what, three? Four, right. <laughs> I don't know, anyway. <laughs> Did you, do you, okay, so have you ever, do you know, how do you say it? Okay, so all the miso soup that we have, 
I'm pretty sure that you see the water and the miso separating. Right? Right? 老福州人喜欢吃海鲜。嗨，你好，林梦雄。Yeah, okay. There's a tr trick to make them not separate. Okay. Now this is boiling, right? I am going to turn it off. If you don't boil your miso, the miso will not separate. Okay, you want to see? Okay, here we go. But then also because you know sometimes you know it's so hot and you're like, oh, what's the right temperature? Do how long do I wait for it to bring down a little temperature to、uh, so that the miso won't separate? So I found out because you know I like to splash a little alcohol onto my chicken soup all the time. So I'm like, oh, that makes it taste so good. Then why not splash splashing a little sake into your miso soup? Miso soup, optional, but it's gonna be so. Okay, so I'm just gonna probably put in about a third of a cup. That's it. You know, you just kind of bring down the temperature a little bit, so it's not like boiling hot. And then add this another flavor into your miso soup, right? Layer, layer of building. Okay, the flavor thing. Okay, one more trip later. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in my.、Uh, White miso, miso, miso. Okay, and I'm just gonna use this. This way, you can make sure that it's dissolved completely, dissolved well. Okay. And then the darker miso. You just have to play with it, cause you know some people like it sweeter, some people like it, you know, other, you know, like saltier. So you do you. You are the boss in your kitchen, while I am the queen in this kitchen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me taste it real quick. Holy smokes! It is so good. I am trying to decide if I want it to be a little sweeter or saltier. I think, okay, maybe a little saltier, maybe a little bit both. Okay, so this is another tip. Okay, this is, you use a, a drainer, strainer, strainer to dissolve in there, so you can have it. Make sure it's all dissolved very well. Okay, my next secret ingredient. Well, make this miso soup out of this world. Okay, it's this thing. What is it? I told you, it's secret ingredient. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> no, okay, it's not funny. <laughs> I just feel like, oh my god, I'm giving out my secret. <laughs> okay, this is the white sesame paste. Okay, I tell you, you put in this, it's gonna. But make sure you don't put a lot of it. You want to put a little bit in. It gives it this whole big. Body, it's like it's a French wine. Okay, it's like whole big body of flavor, and it's a little nutty, and so it's kind of, I don't know, make it. It's like I don't know. It's like before Hawk, Hawk, it's like a superhero. He's a super smart guy, but then with this, it's like Hawk.、Oh, you know, like this is like the miso soup. You know, like making a statement. Okay, this miso soup is gonna blow your mind. Put it in. Again, you have to play with the amount、uh, of the sesame paste. How much sesame paste you want to put in? White sesame paste, because you want to make sure you you. It's enough to give this body, but、uh, not enough for people to 
know that, oh wait, is this a sesame soup or a soup or a miso soup, right? Just a little bit. And I actually think any nut cream you probably can try, it will probably do, it's all like the same thing. It's like, it's the same philosophy of using different misos and using different uh, tomatoes, you know, it's just adding some extra body to this thing and it's so powerful. I'm telling you, this is so powerful that, you know, just a little bit of that makes the whole miso soup a totally different level, totally. And you will never appreciate the miso soup from the normal restaurants anymore, seriously. It's good and bad, it's good and bad. Never going, can't go back anymore. Oh, God, it's so good, I'm not even joking. This is not even, even a show, okay? This is just so good, oh my God. Okay, last but not least is, okay, we, where's my wakami, wakami over there? Did you put it in there? Wakami. Right. Okay, so a little wakame seaweed. Okay, oh, you can take the fish bone out if this is like a, for guests, okay? But then because it's for family, I don't take the fish bone out. We can, because you know, we Asian, we suck on the bones, okay? We suck in the bones. So we like it. So I'm gonna keep them in. But then you can totally at this point, take, actually before you put the miso in, you should take the bones out. Okay, so I am going to put in some of these Cut wakame dry seaweed. Wakame. Wakame. Okay, wakame. Dry wakame seaweed in there, and they're gonna, they're gonna ex, uh, expand. What? Sorry. They're gonna expand okay. real quick. I'm gonna ruin the pot. Okay, and put it in. Just a little. Okay. And some green onions. And you look at my miso soup, it's not separating from this water. Look at my miso soup, it's not separating. Green onion. Lots of it, because I love green onions. You don't have to put in so much. But I love green onions. So, I'm putting them all in. And now, put in your amazing clam, just to heat them back up in the soup okay now we're gonna see what well actually do we want to choose which bowl to put in or should I just use both of them oops okay So Kathy, Kathy said, wow, about what? The sesame thing? All right, I've got these cute bowls. Very unique one. Huh? Oh, this one, we're gonna do it later. Okay, so let's put everything away first. So that they can look you can see my miso soup. Okay. Okie doke, let's do this. Gotta have some clam. And you see those uh, wakame, wakame seaweeds already open up. They're super fast. Oh, 
into a broken piece. Okay. And depends on what kind of miso you use, the, the color of the soup is darker or lighter, right? But for me, the flavor is the most important. Any more? Here are the miso soup, all of it. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. See, isn't it actually super easy because, what was that, honey? Do you wanna give them a close up? Oh, like this? Mm-hmm, nice. Okay. So it's like all super easy, doable thing, right? So first of all, you wanna have these, um, Either make your own dashi, dashi, which I'm gonna show you what we, what we did earlier. We're gonna finish that, and you can, or you can get these dashi stock powder and from Costco or from online. I included the link in one of the comments. I'll also put it back in the description area, to edit it, and then so you make that typical, or you know your basic Japanese broth, and then you want to have some kind of fish bones. I prefer halibut, but then any kinds of fish bones or fish, and you put it in. And then you cook it for a little bit, 10 minutes, 10 minutes or 30 minutes. And then another tip is what? To see. Oh, and then you, you mix two different kinds of miso, miso that you can find. Okay, the lighter, lighter one and then the, the, the darker ones. And then what else? Oh, the, the, the secret ingredient, the sesame. Okay, a little bit of sesame paste. I don't know if the, if the tahini, 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 I don't know if the tahini would be the right one for this, but then you, if you can, but you can try. I'm pretty sure they're all, like, they, they can all work. Um, or any other nuts, you should give it a try. Exper experiment and let me know. If you try any of it and you think it works, let me know, because I, I would love to know. And then, um, so sesame paste. So I did including a link in the uh, in the comments or description as well about uh, for the Japanese sesame paste. What I use is actually the Taiwanese sesame paste, but then the Japanese one would totally work as well. And that's about it. Oh, a splash of sake too. Splash of sake. Okay, have we reviewed and covered everything? Just watch the video again. Yes, yeah, just watch it again. Just watch it again and share. Thank you. All right, I think that's it. Itadakimasu! Okay, I'll see you guys next time! Bye! So while I was cooking dinner, I was gonna use my homemade broth to make the katsudon sauce. And then I was like, oh, I promised to show you guys what I'm gonna do with it. I totally forgot. So here it is. Okay, you take out these big seaweed out first. Okay. Take out. Out. Okay, and then you just drain it. There you go. And look, this clear, beautiful Japanese broth. You can use it to do steam eggs, to make any kinds of soup, soup base, or even cook rice with it. It will be super delicious. All right, now that's it. Thank you.